going to have a series called uh, the quick fire revision on environmental management and uh, as you all know environmental management is made up of nine different topics it's made up of chapter one to nine rocks and minerals um, energy and the environment agriculture and the environment water and its management ocean and fisheries uh, managing natural disasters uh, the atmosphere and human activities human population and natural ecosystem and human activities so for this quick fire revision i'm going to have a nine videos that covers each of these topics so for this first um an um, aspect of the video we're going to be looking at the first chapter one topic which is rock and minerals and their exploitation so quickly let me go to the content now first chapter one um, the first thing you'll be access um, in your syllabus content 1.1 has to do with formation of rocks and there are three types of rock which are called the MIS and M stands for metamorphic, I for igneous and S for sedimentary rocks. Uh, metamorphic rocks are rocks or, or um, rocks or igneous or sedimentary rocks that are formed or are called a change rock that have undergone a process of heat and pressure. So they are rocks that are exposed to heat and pressure which will not lead to crystallization of um, uh, the rock uh, to form a new crystal structure which is now a metamorphic rock so igneous rocks are rocks formed by cooling of magma uh, um, of molten lava or magma from that erupts from the mantle to the earth's surface and examples of igneous rocks are granite and basalt why for metamorphic rocks they are marbles and slates are examples of metamorphic rocks so sedimentary rocks are uh, rocks formed from sediments or small particles of rocks uh, rocks that are deposited in layers rocks uh, that um, contain fossils an example as limestone sandstone and shale are all examples of sedimentary rocks so sedimentary rocks are, are rocks that have undergone weathering uh, forming sediment and these sediments are transported and deposited along river beds uh, so they deposit on each other leading to the formation of different layers so pressure from the preceding layer will now help the rock to now crystallize uh, or, or possibly join together to form a sedimentary rocks now um, rock circle you need to know about the rock circle uh, it comes out also in exam now there are three types of rock earlier that we've mentioned which are metamorphic sedimentary and igneous rock now what the rock circle means is each of these rocks are converted from one form to another so starting from let's start from igneous rock because it's more like the parent rock which is formed from uh, eruption of um, magma and solidification of the lava on the earth surface to form igneous rock now igneous rock can undergo um, weathering and erosion so once it undergoes weathering and erosion it now forms sediment which are small sand particles now these sediments which are small sand particles are deposited along um, the bed of a river and buried so and form different layers so each succession of the layers will create pressure and the pressure will now lead to compaction and cementation of these what sediments leading to the formation of what sedimentary rocks now uh, so sedimentary rocks being exposed to heat and pressure will undergo the process of metamorphosis metamorphism to form metamorphic rocks now having known this you find out that this same igneous rock uh, undergo weathering and erosion sorry igneous rock can also um, be exposed to heat and pressure to undergo metamorphism to form metamorphic rocks now <coughs> metamorphic rocks can still be weathered just like igneous rock can still undergo weathering and erosion to form sediment which will now eventually form sedimentary rocks also now you see igneous rock can melt sedimentary rocks can melt and metamorphic rocks can melt and each of these rocks will melt at destructive plate boundaries which we we'll look at when we look at chapter chapter seven or chapter six there about um, natural hazard uh, where we we'll look at plate boundaries so each of these rocks can melt at destructive plate boundary 
destructive plate. Now, they'll melt that destructive plate boundary to form magma. The magma will now erupt again and solidify to form igneous rock, and the whole process continues over again. That's it about rock circle. Now, uh, extraction of rocks and minerals from the earth. Now, there are different methods of extraction. So, the method of extracting rocks and minerals uh, uh, include we have surface mining. There is surface mining and subsurface mining. So, uh, surface mining, and we have sub surface mining. Now, surface mining is a form of mining in which the soil and the rock covering the mineral deposit are removed. Now, surface mining is carried out when the mineral is is uh, close to the surface of, 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 of is close to the surface of the soil. So, if you have uh, this is the soil and the minerals is close to the surface, then the type of mining that will take place there is uh, a surface mining. And there are different types of surface mining, and these types include the Let's move the open cast, open pit. So you see, this type included uh, types of surface uh, surface mining now. So we're looking at types of surface mining. Now this include open cast, open pit, open cut, and strip mining. Now. I've seen a question where they will ask, describe a question where they ask you describe uh, a surface mining or usually how they will structure the question will be they will give you a, a diagram just like what we have here. Now they'll ask you which type of mining is taking place. Now simple, you know that it, this can be you can open pit. Or you can put open cast. Then the B part of the question will now be describe how a, the mineral here is being uh, extracted. So you can just write it in steps. Now remember, I said something. I said it surface mining is when the mineral is close to the surface. So if you have um, and minerals itself are defined are found in rocks. So because rocks are aggregate of minerals. So if you have a rock beneath the earth surface here that contain minerals. Let's say these are the minerals inside this rock. And you have soil covering this surface. Now, on top of this soil, you expect that there will be vegetation. Vegetation of plants will be grown, uh, will must have grown here. So for you to be able to extract this mineral that is beneath the earth cross, what you do first is the first step of surface mining is you clear the vegetation. Clear the vegetation. Now, the second uh, aspect there is, after you clear the vegetation, you will now carry out, uh, you use explosive, you use explosive to break, to break the rocks. So you remove this vegetation, you've been able to clear this vegetation, but you don't have access to the, so you now use explosive to break down some part of these rocks. Now, when you break down the rocks with explosive, what will now happen? You, the mineral will now be exposed. So you now use diggers to pack the minerals, to pack the minerals into where? Into trucks. Now, the trucks will now transport it to where it will be processed. That's, that's just it. Now, subsurface mining is carried out when the rock or mineral or precious stone are located at a distance far beneath the ground to be extracted with surface mining. So it is located down beneath the earth's surface that you cannot use surface mining to extract it. So you must use uh, subsurface mining. And the type of subsurface mining we have here is deep mining and we also have a, a shaft mining. Now, if you need uh, a detailed explanation of this you can also still watch my video on minerals uh, mineral extraction so factors that uh, affect the decision to extract rocks and minerals 
Now, there are several factors which include um, one, the cost of ex exploration or extraction. Now, if the cost of extraction is high, if the cost of extraction is high, then you know you will not be able, uh, the, the, the profit will be low. The profit will be low. And if the profit is low, then there might not be need for you to extract that particular mineral. Another thing is the geology. The geology means the type of rocks. The type of rock can also affect the decision to extract minerals. Then accessibility. Where is the mineral located? Is it, are there roads, are there road network to make it easy for you to transport the mineral uh, that has been extracted? And you also look at the EIA. The environmental impact assessment (EIA). Now, if the if the impact of this extraction on the environment is high, then the mineral might not be approved for it to be extracted. Now, supply and demand. If the supply of that particular mineral is high and the demand is low, then there will be no need for it to extract it because it's readily available in the market. So these are factors that affect the decision to extract minerals. Then next, you look at the impact of rocks and mineral extraction. You see, rocks and mineral extraction have a lot of impact on people and also the environment. So there are positive impact and there are negative impact. And you, you might be asked the environmental impact or the economic impact of extraction, of um, mining, of, of mineral extraction. Now, the positive impact is uh, employment opportunities for the miners. Now, improvement of the local and national economy. So, the mineral can be sold by the government and the money derived can be used for infrastructural development and to improve the economy. So, you see, infrastructural development. Now, you can bring in multiplier factor. If it creates employment, then it will help to improve the standard of living of the miners. Improve standard of living. Improve standard of living for the miners. Now, the negative impact of rocks and mineral extraction uh, include <coughs> where you have visual pollution. Um, remember, surface mining, you have to clear the vegetation, so loss of vegetation. And visual pollution here can also be, uh, when you use explosive, there will be high amount of dust into the atmosphere. So it can, it can cause visual pollution. Uh, it can also cause noise pollution. It, you see dust into the atmosphere, so leading to air pollution. Now, because you clear the vegetation, loses of vegetation, which can destruct, destruct, or destroy the food chain. Now, when you clear vegetation, it also leads to loss of biodiversity. Uh, river and water pollution also can take place. Increase in traffic or road congestion when, uh, 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 when the road is close to uh, uh, a mining site. You find out that there will be constant amount of trucks that ply through that route, leading to increase in traffic and road congestion. Now, the waste from rock and minerals can lead to land pollution also. But however, there are methods of managing the impact of rocks and mineral extraction. So, there are two ways here we look at it. Now, when you hear managing the impact of rocks and mineral extraction, you now look at strategies first. What are the strategies for restoring the landscape damaged by mining? Now, once mining has taken place, you find out that within that environment, the landscape will, will be affected, it will be damaged. Now, there are ways in which uh, such landscape can be restored, which include safe disposal of mining waste. Uh, land restoration should take place, such as soil improvement, bioremediation, and planting of trees. Now, making lakes and natural reserves uh, from the mining site in order for you to restore um, the landscape and using the site as a landfill site and also there are ways that mine can be used after extraction is finished and so the boats here there is no much difference between them if you remember any in the exam they will still give you your mark now once mining is done the place can be used as a, a waste disposal site uh, which is landfill it can be converted to a lake it can be filled with water and be used for aqua culture that's fish farming or it can also be used for farming uh, when you fill it with uh, waste disposal it will be highly fertile because there's enough uh, organic manure and thereby 
making it fit for farming and also you can convert it to a forestry or a park you can even convert it to a leisure sports stadium or a golf course you can you can build a solar uh, and power farms uh, uh, when you are done with uh, the extraction in order to reclaim the land uh, then it, usually you can convert it to uh, for restoring habitat eco-friendly project you can convert it to an estate to have um, um, living accommodation, storage in underground mines, low-grade thermal energy from flooded deep mines working, and also tourist attraction. So next, uh, or lastly for this topic, is sustainable use of rocks and minerals. How is the use of rocks and minerals sustainable? You, you have you should be able to define what is sustainable resources and sustainable development. Then you now look at the strategies for uh, the sustainable use of rocks and minerals. First, what is sustainable resources? Is one that is produced as rapidly as it is removed from the environment so that it does not run out. That makes the resource sustainable. So you should know that definition. Very, very important. Is one that is produced as rapidly as it is removed from the environment so that it does not run out. Why sustainable development is development providing for the need of an increasing human population without harming the environment. That's sustainable development. Is development providing for the need of an increasing human population without harming the environment? Then what are the strategies now? We now look at strategies for sustainable use of rocks and minerals. How can we make the use of rocks and minerals sustainable? Is one, increasing efficiency. We increase the efficiency of extraction of rocks and minerals. We increase the efficiency of the use of rock and minerals. So look at these two words. Don't get confused about them. One is increase efficiency of extraction. One is increase efficiency of the use of rocks and minerals. Now, the need to recycle. So you can look at reuse, reuse, recycle. So, the need to recycle rocks and minerals, and we can look at legislations also. These are four major ways or strategies to control the use of minerals. Now, we are done with chapter one. In our next, a quick revision of a complete chapter, we'll now look at chapter two, energy and the environment. So, thank you, and please subscribe to have a, a quick, constant update.